I've been the medical director in the state hospital for over 14 years and in that time I've seen remarkable change. Uh, most obviously in the physical layout with a brand new purpose-built hospital opening in 2011. But I think even more importantly I've seen remarkable change in terms of the emphasis on multidisciplinary team working and the care around the patients and in the real focus on clinical improvement and outcomes. And that means considering what works and what we need to change. I'm remarkably proud of the clinical staff within the hospital. They work with people who have major mental illnesses and disorders and whose behaviour is often extremely challenging and sometimes aggressive. And they do this day in, day out with the utmost professionalism and kindness. They have a real focus on the clinical need of the individual as well as a good understanding of the whole area of risk management and public safety. So the patients in the state hospital are all men. Uh, their average age is in their 40s, but we range from the 20s right up to the high 60s. Um, they often come from very difficult backgrounds where deprivation has been part of their childhood and drug and alcohol problems are common. So most of them have schizophrenia. Now just under one in a hundred of us will get schizophrenia. Uh, it's a major mental illness characterised by hallucinations such as hearing voices which are invariably unpleasant and threatening uh, and delusional beliefs so that you're being poisoned, being followed that the aliens are going to land, something that times can be very bizarre. Well, they are 100% patients and we are part of the National Health Service and this is really important. We're about assessment, care and treatment and we have a very clear public safety role and we take that extremely seriously, but we are part of the NHS. So people come to us, they are not inmates, they are not prisoners, they are individuals and they are patients. So it's the clinical patient interaction that we have here. And patients in high security will always be with clinical staff. We do have some security staff, but they're responsible for the security measures and the peripheral uh, security to the hospital. They're not involved with day-to-day -day, uh, patient care. Everyone admitted to the state hospital is here under mental health legislation. No one is here on a voluntary basis. Now, mental health legislation gives psychiatrists powers to keep someone in hospital, to assess them and to treat them where necessary. And those are very extreme powers. But the other aspect of our Mental Health Act is that it gives the individual all sorts of protections and all sorts of rights. And we really work hard in the state hospital and with the independent advocacy department to ensure that patients can fully use these rights. And state hospital was the first public body to become Human Rights Act compliant in Scotland. And that means that all of our policies and procedures, they're based on the individual rather than on blanket restrictions. But I'd like to talk particularly about the research that we've done over the last 20 years following a cohort of 240 patients who were in the state hospital and looking at what their outcomes have been. And when we look at this, their outcomes are very good in terms of low rates of reoffending. They're good in terms of symptom control, so reducing delusions and hallucinations. And they're good in terms of moving on down the hierarchy of security levels and into the community. Our patients do well. Sadly, where they do not do well is in terms of their physical health. And our male patients die on average 16 years earlier than men born in a similar area at a similar time. So physical health is a major focus for us. The other aspects where they don't do well is in terms of personal matters, the ability to get a job and an intimate relationship. Now, some of that will be to do with the illness itself, but some of it's also to do with stigma against people in our society 
who have major mental disorders, let alone those who have also offended. And so that's an area that we really need to tackle to increase opportunities for people. Because remember, as you do that, so as you increase the stability in somebody's life, so you much reduce their risk and the chances of any reoffending. So the other aspect to our research is to compare what we're doing with other countries and other legal jurisdictions. And we've done that numerous times, comparing ourselves with countries across Europe, with of course our neighbours south of the border and internationally. We were involved in a large study involving five continents and nine countries uh, where we examined all of the different services. And what we can say from that is that we have a mature, well-structured service with good outcomes and clear methods to study outcomes. So we compared very favourably.